Hello again, Year 8. Today we're going to be carrying on our look at probability, continuing with the work that we started on Venn diagrams. We're going to be introducing a little bit of new terminology and also a new notation for how we can write some of the maths. So I hope you've been able to print out a sheet, but if you haven't, it is the usual drill, please, of writing down a title, a date and an objective. So we're going to be talking about Venn diagrams, we're also going to be talking about set notation, and we're also going to be introducing a few new ways of writing things. Let's get our brains awake. I want you to think of the integers, so the whole numbers, between 1 and 20. And we're going to think about which of those numbers are even, prime, cube numbers, or square numbers. Some interesting notation that you might see today is this funny symbol here. Now this just means the data that we are using and you can see I've written the numbers 1 to 20. Sometimes that can be referred to as the universal set and that is a Greek letter called Xi. Um, it's a funny funny thing to try and draw. The best way of kind of describing it is kind of a, a backwards three with a funny little squiggle. Um, also, you might sometimes see when it's done in a different font, it looks something like that. So, don't worry too much about trying to draw that. I think sometimes drawing these curly brackets is difficult enough. So, if this is my set of data, the numbers 1 to 20, the even numbers, which I've called E, would be all the numbers from 2 to 20 um, that are even. So, 2, 4, 6, and so on. And you'll see I've put the numbers in this set, I've populated this set in numerical order. So again, using the numbers 1 to 20, what would the subset of prime numbers look like? So which numbers from 1 to 20 are prime? Well, let's remember 1 isn't, so it is 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, and 19 close with a curly bracket. S for the square numbers. Which numbers between 1 and 20 are square? Well, we've got 1 times 1, which is 1. 2 times 2, which is 4. 3 times 3, which is 9. 4 times 4, which is 16. And 5 times 5 is too big, so let's close that set off. Finally, cube numbers. Well, we've got 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1. 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. And 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So that is too large. So it is just the numbers 1 to 8. So this is how we can write a list or a set of numbers using set notation and curly brackets. The other new idea for today's lesson is introducing some new vocabulary and notation to go with that as well. We met the word intersection last lesson and I hope you remember that the intersection would be the overlap and the overlap of A and B and I would suggest you shade this in on your diagram is that bit there. And there's a way that we can write the intersection of A and B. We write A, what looks like a kind of an upside down U because it is curved, and B. So that notation there, that A, that upside down U, or N, B, means the intersection, the overlap of A and B. And I always think that's really easy to remember because that shape looks like an N an intersection, you can imagine, starts a little bit like an N. Okay, we've got another new word for today, the union. The union of A and B is all of A and B together. And again, there's ways of remembering this, the union, when two people get married and enter that, um, what's it called, the holy union, um, that's two people coming together. Okay, so A and B or the union of A and B is everything that's in A and B 
all combined. This one does look like a U, so it's A union B. All of A and U together. So if you see that symbol today, it is the two things put all together. And our final new word for today, and our final new bit of notation, is the complement of something. And the complement of a letter is everything that is not in the letter. So, for example, if this circle represents A, the complement of A, and again, I would colour this in on your sheet, is everything that is not in A. How do I write that? Well, I write that as an A with a dash at the side. It's a little bit like A inverted comma. So that is everything that is not in A. So let's put our two things together, our set notation and our Venn diagrams and see how this can work in a question. So we're going to use our results for what we did earlier on with the cube and the square numbers from 1 to 20. And we're going to populate the Venn diagram. Okay, this is a little bit different from how we were populating Venn diagrams last lesson because we were just putting the total numbers into the Venn diagram. This time I'm going to represent every individual piece of data. So I normally start with the intersection if that's possible. So which numbers were both cube and square? Well, there was just one. It was the number one. What other square numbers did we have? Well, we had four, we had nine, and we had 16. So they go in this part of the square number section. What other numbers were cube? We just had the number eight. And then I need to make sure I've filled in all the other numbers between one and 20 that we haven't included yet. So I'll just go through those in order. So we did one. So we've got two, three, four's already been done, five, six, seven, eight's been done, nine's been done, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16's been done, 17, 18, 19, 20. And sometimes you might see that funny little symbol hovering around the corner of your Venn diagram. So my first question, it says, what numbers are in C in intersection S? So in other words, what is in the overlap? And there is only one number that is in that set in the intersection, and that is one. I'll put it in some curly brackets. Now pay attention to this second question because the second question is slightly different. It isn't asking us what numbers. It's now asking us what is the probability of picking a number at random that is in the union of C and S. So remember the union is everything all together in C and S. Okay, and you can see there's one, two, three, four, five numbers that are in C and S. Don't count the intersection twice. So don't go, oh, there's two in C and there's four in S. So that is six. No, there's only five all together. So that is a probability of five twentieths, which is one quarter. Finally, it says, what is the probability of picking a number at random that is in the complement of C? So that basically means a number that is not in C. Well, I could count all of these up, but it's a lot quicker to say, well, if there's two numbers in C, there are all the rest. There's 18 that are not in C. 18 twentieths is the same as 9 tenths. Now, just like last lesson, there are some questions on the question sheet for you to try split into level one, two and three. I haven't done a great deal of questions just in case one, you're one of those students that doesn't have access to a printer. And so you're going to have to draw some of these Venn diagrams out. Pay attention. Is it a question where I'm writing a list of numbers? If so, 
write it with some curly brackets as a set or is it a question that has a p because remember if it's a question that has a p it's asking you to work out a probability remember to always try and leave your answer in the simplest form as always five minutes before the end use my detailed answers to check mark and correct your work with a different colored pen and again, as always, if you have any questions, you can ask in the Ask the Teacher channel.